just let me out That clock keeps ticking like a metronome And my thoughts keep telling me to get me home But my balls keep telling me to let me out Oh, just let me out Tudor almost had a breakaway unveiling at Basel World 2019. Almost. We all expected to see a snowflake this year, but we were instead left disappointed. In part two of this series, I will discuss why we never saw the reveal of the snowflake, and I'm sure it's going to be comprehensive and will make a lot of sense. First, I'd like to thank Andrew Light for inspiring my thoughts on this two-part series of videos. I really enjoy bringing out these discussions, so if you would like to hear a designer discuss any of your watch suggestions, please comment your topics below and I'll write them up. The Black Bay P01 has been received with mixed reviews, most of them negative, but I would like to argue a point otherwise. Let's face it, it doesn't take an analyst to see that Basel World 2019 had many, many flops and only a handful of successes. When the Hodinki team can talk in dull, monotone voices about Rolex and Tudor, then we know that something is amiss. We as watch enthusiasts are all tired of the same drab releases that come out every year from the heavy-hitting brands. There is that peak of inevitable excitement, and then the release happens, and instead of being impressed, like we should be, we roll our eyes, swear vehemently at the screen, and rant in the comment sections. There is not much to be excited about now that the hype has died, shriveled up and regressed. Back on the topic, when Rolex released their lineup, we yawned. There was a sigh, but still a glimmer of hope. Then Tudor brought out their pieces and the flame went out. But look, all of the watches are great. They're all functional. They're all going to sell, with a few exceptions, but they are all too safe. Here's the reality. We know great design when we see it, but we are so accustomed to it that it becomes boring. We want change. It's human nature. But when we see change, we immediately don't like it until maybe it grows on us. This is why the P01 piqued my interest. As a designer, I look at it from a point of what it represents, but also what it could be and what it could mean for the future. It is safe to say that Tudor is now a branch of Rolex that is willing to do their dirty work for them. They have been given a green light by the crown to be the creative force in the family. They are open to innovating for the big player, and for the most part they are respected for it. The Black Bay line was and still is their magnum opus. But many of us are tired of seeing the same formula. Even their release of the two-tone chronograph, which I secretly admire for its boldness, was received but not acknowledged. So the P01, a watch that is such a rare prototype that Tudor only produced a handful. I think I heard they made two in total. These were watches aimed at the Navy, but the contract was lost to Bolivar in the 60s. Taking a step back and looking at the original piece, it looks so rad. It looks like a genuine tool watch that would be seen on the wrist of a Navy SEAL in Vietnam or a Spec Ops Commando paratrooper. The function is what makes the watch so interesting, and a standout. Before bezels had internal ratchets, they would be able to spin freely in both directions. Take a look at any vintage Submariner or GMT from the 60s and 70s. They were prone to pop off, be lost, or get damaged easily. So this old school approach guaranteed the bezel's safety, and had quite a hardcore way of doing it. When I first saw the watch being handled, seeing the end links lift up, my immediate reaction was, how could they have fitted the wrong end links to the watch? Is this a novelty now? Until I saw that it had a very cool function. Either side of the end link ratchets the bezel teeth in place, locking it tight. So then my reaction was, this is a seriously cool nod to designs of the past. But then I noticed that the bezel was a compass, and then the configuration didn't make sense to me. People are ripping into this watch left, right and center, saying that Tudor created a homage to an SKX. And I did as well. It's pretty funny. The crown at the four position, the crown guards, and even the case, none of us can deny looks similar to a Seiko. Then we move to the strap. And this is when the watch lost me completely. It's just peculiar. Too peculiar. This to me, as a designer, feels rushed. This element of the watch could have been thoroughly revised, and I think it's what throws the design off for a lot of people. But in saying that, Tudor got some parts right. The case is 42mm, and because of the small dial, the watch will look smaller on the wrist. 
The bezel matches the color of the case. Cool, I like that. It's discreet. It also helps reduce its visual size. The offset crown, yes, it's a good call because it makes it unique and also easily wearable on the wrist. So far, so good. Personally, I would have liked the size to decrease down to 39 millimeters, but that's just me. But, and this is a big caveat, this watch is simply an homage piece and not something practical for the everyday person, which is such a shame. If they had done the smart move and produced the original homage, similar to how Amiga presents their pieces in limited edition collections, but also a more modern variant, this watch would be a killer. It would feel fresh and new. First, the Tudor P01 doesn't roll off the tongue very well. Since this watch was intended for the Navy and was codenamed Commando during its prototyping phases, let's do the incredibly hard job and call it the Black Bay Commando. Wow, already it sounds so cool. Why? A lot of us have heard of the elusive Rolex Explorer with the Commando dial, a watch that it was in circulation during the time of this piece. They are exceptionally rare, but now we have a fresh introduction of a watch that suits the build. There is no overthinking needed with this redesign. It can be simple and even basic, just as long as it stays true to its original DNA. The standout feature of the watch is the case and the end links, so they remain. They are the hero of the design. The crown can also stay. And with a bit of adding and subtracting, we now have a watch that looks like it could kick the Black Bay's ass. The simple changes include an integrated rivet bracelet, allowing for the end links to still function as planned. The silver compass bezel insert is now replaced with a silver dive bezel, a much more practical alternative for everyday use. And the dial, remove the date complication to keep the symmetry, and in bold red writing underneath the hands, have Commando printed, maybe with an added touch of a T for tritium. We go from something strange to something we can understand and appreciate. But all that being said, what does this watch say about the future? Even if the design is not as successful as many of us would have liked, some are even saying that it should have remained a prototype and was left a prototype for a reason. This new revival of the watch shows that a brand like Tudor is willing to experiment. They are willing to take a risk and revitalize some of the coolest innovations that were seen in the 60s and 70s. We cannot fault them for trying. But if it took me 10 minutes to create a basic mock-up like this, I think we can all agree that they need to try a little harder.